Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another DIY. We finally completed our epoxy and our garage floors and I can't wait to show you guys how you can achieve the same look. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips and what not to do and what to avoid so you can get the best out of your epoxy floors. So if you're interested, keep on watching. Make sure you like this video if it was helpful and if you enjoyed watching. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more new upcoming videos. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so this is what you'll need for this project. You're going to need a paintbrush. Your starting point is going to be the edges of your garage. It's very important that you start off that way. And later in the video, you'll see why. You're also going to need one of these um, paint rollers and make sure it's semi-smooth to smooth surfaces. That's very important you pay attention to that. You're also going to need one of these um, large, or not large, but long sticks. And this is gonna come in handy when you are covering the entire floors. And if you have cracks on your floors, you're definitely going to need this. Um, this worked perfectly for us. We purchased all of this that I'm mentioning in today's video at the Home Depot. Um, this one here is ready for you to use. It's a ready mix and concrete patcher. And all you need is a spatula and then you open it. This is what it looks like. And then you kind of just scoop it up and then start patching your cracks. Uh, keep in mind, it does take about four to six hours for this to be completely dry. So you have to do this beforehand before you do anything else to your floors. And then of course, you're going to need your epoxy kit. We purchased this one from the Home Depot. And this is the color that we went with here. It's the dark gray gloss. And our sparkles or confettis um, are black, gray, and white. They do come in other option of colors, but this is what we wanted, um, especially because the little confettis are black, gray, and white. There was another very similar one that had a navy, which I didn't want any blue or navy in my floors, so you make sure you pay attention to that because the paint might be a gray one and then the confetti comes in multicolor, so just make sure you guys pay attention to that. So before I move any further into this DIY video, I'm going to share some very important tips that I want you guys to know um, so you can get the best out of your epoxy project. Number one is going to be sealing your cracks. If you have super thin, fine cracks, don't worry about this step. But in our case, we had a lot of imperfections and very large cracks, so we went ahead and sealed it. We actually didn't go and jump into tip number two, which I am telling you guys because I don't want you guys to go through this. So after you have sealed your cracks, you have to go over and sand it to a smooth finish. This we skipped. Um, we just didn't want to go that extra mile and avoid this step. We just want to kind of, we were rushing and we wanted to get this done as soon as possible. So we decided not to do that which was a big mistake because this is the result we had. As you can see here, you can see every single crack that we filled and when you touch it and go over it, it's super rough. It's not smooth like the rest of the floors. Tip number three is you have to etch your floors. This comes included with your kit. You just have to mix it with two gallons of water and then wash your floors and make sure you rinse well. Tip number four, you have to do this, it's a must. You have to make sure you mix both bags of paints because as you can see here, we did not. The top gray, you have like different shades of gray. The top gray is the first bag, that was like the half of the garage and then the second half was a darker gray. Why does that happen? I don't know. So um, yes, those was like some mistakes and I don't want you guys to do the same and make sure you guys avoid those mistakes and make sure you follow these tips. So moving on with this DIY project, here uh, we are just you know, looking at our cracks, they're pretty intense. Um, so you wanna fix all those imperfections, but in our case, we fixed it and we didn't get the best results because as I seen and as I showed you guys earlier, you know, you can see every imperfection <laughs> that we had. So um, make sure you use this one. It's highly recommended. It actually took less than the six hour period to dry. Um, I think it really depends a lot in the area that you live. We're in Texas and it's like 98 degrees right now. So we can tell that this dried up within like the three, four hour mark. Um, so just keep that in mind depending where you live. So um, after we allow the concrete patch to dry, we are gonna move over to the second step and this is going to be etching your floors. 
Uh, basically what this is, is just getting your concrete floors prepped um, for you to allow to paint over it. So it's like a deep clean and basically like a base preparation. So it's very important you don't skip this step. Um, you want to allow the floors to be completely dry before you add your paint. And here we are moving on to the other step, which is getting your paint prepped. Um, here we're just adding a little bit and a little tray um, because we're going to start with our edges. That's very important that you do that. Start off with your edges first and you're going to thank me later because it's just going to be so much simple to just go over the larger areas with a roller paint. Um, another tip here, I think I mentioned earlier, make sure y'all actually mix both bags in one large tray or in a bucket. Um, just to avoid the color dysfunction as, as I showed you guys, I can't even speak. As I showed you guys earlier, there was like different shades of gray. You really want to avoid that. I honestly didn't think that was going to happen to me after I saw tons of reviews and videos on this. I'm just hard headed. I didn't want that to um, happen to us and I didn't think it was and unfortunately it did. So um, here you are going over with your um, roller and just covering the larger areas and you don't have to get too close to the walls and worry about painting over your walls because obviously you already covered that with your paintbrush so that's very important that you guys follow that step it's just going to be less work on you because if you do get your walls painted then you have to go back and then retouch those walls so that's just a tip for you guys um, once you cover a certain amount of area of the paint, you want to go and sparkle up the epoxy confetti. Um, this really is your preference. So my husband and I kept going back and forth. He wanted it like super heavy on confetti and I did not. I just wanted sparks here and there. So we kind of did like a medium coverage so we can both be satisfied. And of course, I was the one spreading the confetti flakes. Um, I just didn't want to overdo it in some areas. I wanted to make sure everything was like nice and even. So um, I don't know. I just kind of went light and then I kind of did like a second layer afterwards. Um, so yeah, here we are just kind of getting all of the areas ready. Um, we are just working at the very back part of the garage first, working our way out through the main garage door. Um, this door that you see here is a side entrance to our home. So we won't be going in through there. We'll be exiting through the main garage door. So we're kind of working our way from the back all the way to the front. And as you can see here, we have the entire family working on this project. Don't be afraid to let your little ones help out. This is paint and it's something that you can definitely just go back and fix. But there's really no way to mess up like he was doing so well he's helped us before with painting projects and so he's very helpful and he loves and enjoys helping us um if you noticed here i just kind of poured the paint on the floor once you get to these larger areas honestly i don't recommend using that tray that we had and sticking the roller in and out because you're not going to get as much paint so i think the best way to cover these larger areas it's going to be just pouring a decent amount of the paint on the floor and if you're using a bucket just like i recommended earlier if you're mixing it together both bags in a bucket then just grab the bucket and tilt it over and do the same thing like i did with the bag so um i wish i would have really done that because i mean you can't really tell we have all our stuff back in the garage and you can't tell like the different shades of gray but it kind of just bothers me knowing that it happened so <laughs> Um, just hopefully you guys listen to me and avoid doing that. Today is Wednesday. We finished this on Sunday morning. So it does say to take about three days for it to be completely dry before you actually step and add anything back onto your garage. So uh, this is why I'm here and I'm giving you guys a closer look. So here it is guys, it's all dry and we will be adding some um, large mats here, especially on this side, probably just one large one. This is the side where I park my vehicle and that's going to protect your epoxy floors from hot tire lift. You want to do that if you are going to be parking your cars inside the garage. Um, with time, you can actually um, start having defects with your floors because your tires are hot and this is just going to protect it and last longer. All right, well, that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope this video was super helpful. Good luck on your project, and I'll see you guys on the next one.